It's what's inside of this black satchel, what we're talking about today, and I've been sitting on this for a couple months now. Everyday carry for street photography. Now, what does that mean? Well, for me, it means lightweight and ultra compact, while also still delivering excellent results with an enjoyable experience. It seems as though when it comes to features versus functionality, the latest hot trends are either the Leica Q2 or the Fujifilm X100V. But there's two problems with the Fuji, low resolution and a crop sensor. In what world would that be a fair competitor to the Leica? You see, the reality is, there's only one true opponent for the Leica Q2, and it was first announced back in 2015, and they still sell it today, by the way. But I want us to rewind back to that time. In June of 2015, Leica announced the Q, their first fixed lens full frame professional compact camera. We're talking about the version one, so at that time it only had 24 megapixels. Four months later, Sony flexed on Leica, and they announced this. This is the RX1R Mark II. Now I've been using this camera every day for the past couple of months. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know this. And this little camera has yet to disappoint. There are a lot of features to talk about with this baby Sony. This thing is not only also full frame, but it is 42 megapixels. A lot of people don't realize that this is an 8K resolution sensor in this little tiny body. And even today, it still outperforms the newer Q2 in many different aspects. But the biggest selling point about this camera, much like the Leica Q, is the lens. Now, there are three different generations of this Sony. The RX1, the RX1R, and then this one, which is the best, the RX1 R2. But they all have the same excellent Carl Zeiss lens. Zeiss made this lens for this camera body, and it is a one of a kind because this 35 millimeter F2 is a sonar lens design. Now, does anything there seem odd to you? A 35 sonar? When you see the Zeiss sonar badge, it's usually on longer focal lengths, like a 50 mil or an 85, or even this 180 millimeter, or you've seen it on zoom lenses. Usually we associate a Zeiss 35 mil with the Distagon lens design or even a Biogon but a 35 sonar is not so typical. Now here's my theory on this. Sony needed a permanent lens for their first compact full frame professional camera, which means it needed to be super versatile, making it usable for not only wide landscapes, but also closer portraits as well. And even though it is a medium wide angle focal length, the sonar design gives it a slightly different performance. And they combined it with one of the world's fastest leaf shutters, having a maximum flash sync speed of one four thousandth of a second. Look at these amazing shots you can get in the bright daylight with just a small portable flash. There's not too many cameras capable of that. Not to mention the leaf shutter is super quiet. Now there is one other Sony E-mount 35 Zeiss lens that is also a sonar design, yet it caps out at an F2.8 and it is not a macro. So the cherry on top with the RX1 lens is that you can pop this bad boy in macro and focus as close as seven inches. Now check that out ripped wide open at an F2. And that is not a microscopic shot of a virus. That is in fact a flower. So combining this 35 sonar lens with this sensor is really like having four Zeiss lenses in one. You have the standard full frame 35 mil F2 and you get the macro capabilities. And then much like the Q2, you have the option for a digital teleconverter. You can punch into both 50 millimeter and 70 millimeter field of views or anything in between. Now those digital zoom options are only available in JPEGs because it's just cropping in on the sensor, which is something you could easily do in post. And since this camera is 14 bit uncompressed raw, I just save everything for the back end. But that's one of the advantages of a fixed lens camera such as this. The 42 megapixel 8K sensor gives you a lot of flexibility. The image rendering of this RX1 lens is so nice. It reminds me of the older contact Zeiss lenses that I used to own. And you guys know I owned all generations of Zeiss, from contacts to ZF2s and ZEs to the Milvis. 
And this 35 sonar does have more of an organic rendering that reminds me of those old Zeiss lenses from the 80s. Definitely when compared to the Milvises, but also even when compared to the ZF2s. The optical design is eight elements in seven groups, and the roots of that specific sonar design dates back to 1929. Now, three of those eight elements are aspherical, with one of them called advanced aspherical and it's a pretty complex lens design. Those aspherical elements are to optimize light transmission and correct for aberrations and distortion, while still allowing for some pretty cool flare. The aperture has nine blades and delivers some pretty smooth bokeh, and like any Zeiss lens, it makes for some pretty cool sun stars as well. I, for one, love the image quality coming out of this lens sensor combo. The micro contrast it has gives it that unique 3D pop that is familiar with the signature Zeiss look. And yet it's not super sharp like a lot of modern lenses, but it's also not superior. It's not a perfect lens from a technical standpoint. Despite those three aspherical elements, it does have some distortion, a little bit of chromatic aberration, and even very slight vignette when ripped wide open but because it's a fixed lens camera, the profile is already loaded into the metadata. And you can easily fix all of those problems with the tap of a couple buttons in Lightroom or whatever post-processing software you use. You can even do the lens corrections in camera if you wanted to. But me, I just save it all for post because again, it is 14-bit uncompressed RAW. Whereas on the Leica Q cameras, a lot of people have claimed their 28 isn't a true 28 millimeter. The theory is that Leica is doing some sort of lens corrections in camera. Don't hold me to that. Those are not my words. I'm just repeating internet gossip. Regardless, the point is Sony gives you the option. You can either do it yourself in post or you can program the camera to make those lens corrections for you. Either way, this lens sensor combo is a beautiful performer and it's still way smaller than the Leica Q2. In fact, it's 211 grams lighter. Now that's quite a bit of difference when you're talking about a day out on the town. Something I enjoy about its size is it's not at all intimidating for your subjects and talk about super discreet street photography. And yet it still has this all black sleek professional look. I've never had any issues shooting in public places with this little camera. And little do they know, the RX1 has way more capabilities than all of its larger competition. Now, a lot of people complain that it's too small, but not if you use the thumbs up grip that was actually made for this camera. It's a nice, perfect fit, it's all brass, and it gives you two different options for thumb rest. And the best part is, is it leaves access to your playback button, but more importantly, your shutter wheel. Now let's talk about why the R Mark II is better than the two previous generations of the RX1. The first one is obvious. It's the only one with 42 megapixels, 42.4 megapixels to be technically correct. It also has a newer AI for the autofocus features, which includes phase detect and face and eye tracking. The R2 also has a newer BSI CMOS sensor, but the real winner to me is this right here the pop-out EVF. Now the specs aren't super amazing on this viewfinder, but it is still an XGA OLED with 1080p resolution. And its magnification is 25% larger than the newer A7C. It's even 12% bigger than the Fujifilm X100V and only two and a half percent smaller than the Leica Q2s. So you consider that with the camera's little tiny size and you can put it away whenever you don't need it. I love that. And of course, it's designed with Zeiss's T-Star anti-reflective coating. And you can even throw on this eye cup for extra comfort. The R Mark II is also the only one that has a tilt screen. And this LCD actually has a higher resolution than the Q2. The last notable feature about this camera is it was the world's first and may still be the only variable low pass filter. So you can choose to turn it off and take advantage of some insanely sharp images at that 42 megapixels, or depending on whatever you're photographing, you can set the OLPF to either standard or high. Now, here's the funny thing. Sony admitted to making this camera as a direct response to the original Leica Q back in 2015. But as you can see, it still gives the newer Q2 a run for its money as well even though that newer Leica came out four years later. However, the R2's biggest advantage over the Q2 is its backside illuminated CMOS sensor, and the newer technology has excellent low light performance. The RX1 R2 has a way cleaner image. Look how clean that black night sky is. And that's with zero noise reduction. 
Again, it boils down to that 42 megapixel 8K resolution with that full frame BSI CMOS sensor. This camera also has a greater dynamic range than the Q2. It's just crazy to me how well it performs. And of course, the autofocus is much quicker on the Sony as well. Now, when comparing this camera to the leader of autofocus, in my opinion, the A7S III, which is a five year younger autofocus, by the way, the hit rate is not that crazy of a difference. They both use the phase detect system plus contrast detect along with face and eye tracking. So in comparing the two in real world use, leaving both in continuous mode, using wide AF selection with face and eye detect on, if the A7S III hits it eight times out of 10, I say the RX1R Mark II hits it six times out of 10. So that's not that big of a real world difference, especially considering that five year age gap. And it's just as snappy for video. And it's safe to say that it outperforms anything from Leica or Fujifilm. But also much like any Sony camera, it boils down to how you map the buttons. I've programmed the AEL button to be the eye detect toggle. And then the C2 button is my AF mode switch to jump between different focus modes. I mainly use wide and expanded spot depending on the situation. And then the C2 one button, which is right next to the shutter, by the way, I have that one programmed to be my manual focus toggle switch. So if the AF is struggling, I tap that, pull focus manually real quick and pop the shot off. I used to be one of the biggest anti autofocus guys until the day I picked up a Sony. When you're talking about documentary style shooting, AKA on the street, it's Sony autofocus all the way for me. Period, end of story. And I am not affiliated with Sony. They don't even know I exist. As always, I'm just passionate about tools that actually deliver. And in my opinion, there's no real difference between zone focusing and auto focusing. It's still a lazy concept of spraying and praying. The difference is with autofocus, at least I can tell the camera where exactly to pull focus to and still get a shallow depth of field if I want it. Now, another winner for me from the R Mark II is it has a faster shutter speed than the Q2. Unless you jump to the electronic shutter, the Leica does max out at one over 2000. And my experience with the Sigma FP makes me want to never use an electronic shutter ever again. While the RX1 R2's leaf shutter can go up to one over 4000. So when comparing that to the mechanical shutter of the Q2, you're talking about an entire one full stop difference. But there is one huge caveat to that. Because of the leaf shutter, if you rip the lens wide open at an F2, it actually does limit the shutter to only one over 2000. And a lot of those old reviews from 2015 failed to mention that. So you can't take advantage of that faster shutter speed until you start stopping down. So my workaround for ripping the lens wide open is to use this high quality B&W circular polarizer. Not only do you get extra protection for your one lens, but you also get that extra stop back, which is extremely beneficial in bright daylight. And that B&W Pola makes daytime photos look extra sexy. I guess that's why it's a hundred bucks. Now in comparing digital cameras, a common debate is differences in color science. But what's more important to me is dynamic range, the low light performance. Is it even full frame? The camera's actual features and capabilities, but more importantly, is it enjoyable to use? So because I'm not thrilled about electronic shutters, there's really only two big differences that the Leica Q2 has over this RX1 R2. The first one is the tactile lens that the Leica has. Whereas these RX1 cameras are focused by wire. So that may be a deal breaker for some of you. That actually was the main thing that kept me away from this camera for quite a while. Yet there is a little focus scale from the early 2000s that pops up to help you out. You can even turn on manual focus assist, the magnifier, focus peaking, you know, all the usual suspects are still there. And the focus by wire isn't as bad as my experience with say Lumix lenses, but to me, it's still missing that special feel. You know, it, it doesn't have the soul of a true manual lens and it just feels sort of wrong. But the autofocus is so good on this camera I guess it evens out. And as the rain picks up here in the LA flood times that we are living in, <laughs> the other winner of the Q2 is the Leica is weather sealed. And that is definitely the biggest benefit of the Leica, you know, because not having weather sealing is something you always have to keep in the back of your mind, depending on wherever the road may take you. It honestly does make me a little nervous about even taking the RX1 down to the beach, you know, with all that sand and mist floating around in the air. Plus two, it's kind of a bummer because 
Bad weather photos are kind of some of the best street photos. Ugh. Before we go, I wanna talk about the video sides of this RX-1R Mark II, because this is a cinematography channel, and I do think the video features on this camera are quite interesting. Now, it does cap out at 1080p, 60 frames per second, so nothing amazing. But you gotta remember, this little camera was never designed for video shooters in the first place. Yet, it still sends a clean video feed out of its micro HDMI port. And it also has a 3.5mm microphone jack which is actually another benefit over the Leica Q2. Now its third port is a micro USB, which you can use to either power the camera via a two amp power bank, or you can plug it into your computer and use it as a webcam. And that would look pretty rad being the only one on zoom with a Zeiss full frame 35 mil F2 lens. Something else is that it does have a pretty decent video codec, all things considered, and that codec is Sony's XAVC-S. So considering this camera's age and its little compact size and the fact that it was never even made for video, I find those features interesting. I even created a pretty decent color recipe to help match it against the modern S Cinetone of my A7S III because I have used the R2 as a B cam by connecting it to my Video Assist or my Ninja 5 and getting ProRes out of it. I've used it on corporate jobs and documentaries. And I've even used it for a talking head here on my own channel without you guys ever even knowing about it because of its clean HDMI signal. And then I power the camera with a little Nano V mount battery using a micro USB to full sized USB cable. Now, if you wanna do that trick with this camera, and avoid overheating, the tip here is to use a high quality USB cable. Now, if you wanna go handheld, you can even turn on Sony's patented Steady Shot. So it is kinda weird they gave all those options for video and yet didn't pump it up to 4K. But maybe because it was 2015, but the reality is the real reason why Sony did not put 4K video in this little tiny camera would be those overheating issues because of its little tiny size and these little baby weak batteries. Which brings me to the biggest negative you will find about the RX-1, hands down, will be the poor battery life. And it's because these batteries are very small. They're the same ones they use in their entire RX-100 compact line. Now I have four of these authentic Sony branded batteries. And I'm gonna tell you right now, as a street shooter, I never turn my cameras off. I don't. A really huge way, in fact, that I've found to conserve power on the R Mark II is to just leave my EVF popped up and the LCD screen off. And I program this down button on the control wheel to toggle between the EVF and the LCD. And since I'm an EVF user anyways, 85% of the time, my LCD screen is off. Even when I take a picture, I don't have that option where it displays the picture just taken, no, none of that. I just leave it off. Doing that little trick, I usually get around 45 minutes to an hour on each battery. Again, that's with the camera constantly on. Now, another pro tip here, only because I've been using this camera uh, literally on a daily basis for nearly two months now, so I know the reality of this camera and the batteries, do not push these little batteries to their limit. In my experience, once the batteries are on their last status bar, they die quick. And if the battery dies on you before you have a chance to power it down, some of your most recent settings will not save. Now, the good news is if the battery dies while you're capturing an image, the camera does have a recovery mode and it actually works. Now, here's some other good news about these little tiny bitty baby batteries. They're so small that three of these is no problem to store anywhere, even if you wanted to keep all three of them in your one front jean pocket. Don't recommend that, but if you had to, you could. Here's the really cool thing that no one's really mentioned yet is that for only $4 extra, Sony gives you a portable micro USB charger. This is the charger. It's pretty rad. Again, that's only $4 more you have to spend with the Sony battery and you get the little charger for free. Now, the downside to this is for whatever ungodly reason, these little batteries take two and a half hours to charge. So that's why I bought four of them, because by the time you burn through all four, the first one that died should be charged and ready to go. Final verdict. When the RX-1 R2 first launched back in 2015, it hit the shelves with a $3,900 price tag. And even still today, 
eight years later, it's still listed on B&H for $3,300. But if you've watched this video up to this point, knowing what you know now, and you're aware of the price of the Leica Q cameras, you would agree the Sony price tag isn't as crazy as it first seems. But you guys know me, you know how dog times rolls. I didn't pay anywhere near that. In fact, I paid less than half of that. I got an open box deal through MPB, and it came with a six month warranty, which may be the way to go if you're buying used old cameras. So look, if you can find one for as cheap as I got it, which is under two grand, then I say it's absolutely worth it because a used Fujifilm X100V goes for that same price. And to me, the Fuji really only has two benefits over the R Mark II, weather sealing and those beautiful Fujifilm simulations. But the reality is this is a true 35 F2 full frame camera which is way better in all aspects. Better low light performance, a greater depth of field, plus double the resolution. And I know you all crop, everyone crops. But in the end, the real winner here is the lens. This is a Zeiss lens and not just one they found in the back of the factory. This lens was made specifically for this sensor and leaf shutter. You can't get this lens anywhere else. The RX1 is the smarter investment but only if you're getting the R Mark II. If it's one of the older generations, sure, it might be a lot cheaper, but it also will have way less features. You gotta remember, the old ones don't have that high megapixel count. They have an older, dumber autofocus. The screen is fixed. They don't have that pop-out EVF. In fact, they don't have an EVF at all. So in that case, you're not gonna be able to do the battery saving trick, which means even less battery time. They have a lower ISO. They're not BSI sensors, so the low light performance isn't gonna be as good. They don't have the variable low pass filter. They don't even have Wi-Fi, and they can't be used as a webcam, which I know those last two is kind of like, man, whatever, but still I'm just pointing out the differences between the older generations and the new one. Now, if you're thinking about paying full price, you may just start leaning towards a used Q2 just for the resale value alone. But you also have to think about the focal length that you like to shoot on. And keep in mind, we're talking about the difference between full frame cameras here. You have to come to the reality with these compact everyday carries that you're stuck with that one lens. I'm just not that big of a fan of a full frame 28 millimeter lens. Because in my opinion, for portraits, the 28 looks a little distorted to me. So in my mind, the Q2 is not as versatile as they all make it out to be. And sure, you can do the crop zoom option, but at the end of the day, it's a crop. You're still getting the performance of a 28 millimeter. But also I just wouldn't pay full price for a Q2 either. My limit would be four grand for a camera like that. Any more than that, and I just don't think it's worth it, especially when something like this RX1 R2 is on the market. This camera is now eight years old and it is still holding up. It still outperforms the Q2 in a lot of categories. Just rewind the video and watch again. Sure, it may not be a piece of jewelry you can wear around your neck and show off with, but it's a machine designed to capture images and it was designed really fucking well, even for eight years ago. If it wasn't as good as I'm saying it is, there is no way it would still be listed on B&H for only a little tiny discount of when it first was dropped back in 2015. Just being real here, this camera right here is a compact camera with professional features. And in my opinion, it is the true competitor, the only competition to the Leica Q2 because we're talking about Zeiss versus Leica. It's the battle of a lifetime. Both the RX1 R2 and the Leica Q2 are full frame. They're both over 40 megapixels with legendary iconic glass. The X100V is not in any of those categories. For me, what it boils down to is full frame will always win. And there's no debating that. It is the reality of the situation. Obviously, you all know I'm a red Komodo user and owner. I've been one of the original owners of that camera. When we're talking about cinema, I actually do prefer Super 35, but in the world of photography, no, 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 I want it all, baby, give it all. And here's why, because I'm talking about the realities of depth of field and a better low light performance. And for documentary street shooting, in my opinion, those two are of the utmost importance. But look, if you're just head over heels for Fujifilm simulations, I actually totally get it. I understand Fuji do have a one of a kind color science. However, if you're that obsessed with film simulations, well, I got something sweet coming for you down the line, and it does not involve Sony this time. 
it's legendary. So be sure you are subscribed if you're new here. Now I have heard rumors that there may be a push for an RX-1R Mark III. Yet, I don't think Zeiss is partnered with Sony anymore, so it would be interesting to see what lens they put on that fourth generation of the RX-1. Now, if you're thinking that it's nowhere near the asking price of $3,300, well, consider this. You could get the 35 f2 Loxia Zeiss lens for any Sony camera, which is the Sony version of the Milvis, but much smaller. However, I did consider that for a minute, combining the Loxia with the a7C, and it's a much larger setup. The lens offers no autofocus, no macro mode, the screen is a swivel screen rather than a tilt, and the EVF is pretty crappy on the a7C, in my opinion. Plus, it's only half the resolution, but maybe you would prefer all the video options that the a7C provides. You know, it just really comes down to whatever you're looking for in an everyday carry. The reality is, the a7C is not that much smaller smaller than my a7S III, whereas this little Sony is way smaller. And for me, size is key when talking about an everyday carry. What makes the RX1 R2 so special is its little tiny size, jam-packed with professional features with an excellent performance. And sure, it may not have the prestige or the reputation of the Q2, but it makes up for it in other areas where truly only a Sony can shine best. And honestly, other than the poor battery life, I don't have any other complaints I can find about this camera after using it for the past two months. And to me, the battery life isn't even that big of a deal, considering you can pick up four of the authentic Sony batteries with two microchargers for $160 total. To me, coming from the cinema world, that is not expensive especially considering one Leica battery costs more than that. This camera is perfect for everything I was looking for in an everyday carry. But I'm not making this video to convince you all to buy this thing. I think that was the misconception with the Sigma FP and that's why I had so many people turn on me. It's like, look man, I don't make these videos to be like, buy this, buy this, be like me. No, no, no. I make these videos to share my experience, my passion, but most of all, just to maybe spread some inspiration. And as some of my Patreon members know, I scoured the land for three whole months before I even discovered this camera. And honestly, it was worth it. Speaking of the Patreon, be on the lookout this week as we continue to dive into the breakdowns and behind the scenes of the spec commercial I shot on the Red Komodo in my Schneider Xenons. And shout out to this month's Patreon producer, Jonathan Arroyo. Holy cow, I did it. We did it through the rain and storms and flooding. This video is over. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tapping that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can see the next long-winded video I put out. I am the exact opposite of a TikTok, folks. So <laughs> I hope you had plenty of popcorn and a few of your favorite pale ales. All right, I gotta get back outside, see what's going on out there. I will not be taking my unweather sealed RX-1 R2. Uh, Enough talking, that's a wrap. It's really coming down out there. Yeah, before you know it, the cordyceps, they're gonna be in us. <laughs> Dude, those are cool. Handheld, look. <laughs> Don't worry, I got the turn out of that. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright, cool. We should do more of those. That okay. looks pretty good, actually. Um, ready?